with each passing episode, we're getting closer and closer to war. And I actually like that the showrunners didn't just immediately jump into everyone going to battle. Instead, taking this slow and steady approach, showing the politics of it, the various you know, transgressions and whatnot, and the tit for tat that ultimately would lead to war, as well as the build up of the armies, I think it helps to add to the tension and build anticipation. With this episode here, it kind of starts off from the mood of the previous episode. Where, as I said, some people might have sided with Rhaenyra previously, or they might have already been Team Green. But with the death of this child, with the murder of this child, it paints her in a bad light, right? For people who might have been on her side, for some of them as a matter of honor, they might have parted ways with her. For others, it might have been that they already didn't like her, and this just became one more thing to set them against her and her being queen. And so we see these two factions sort of having some back and forth, which then leads to a fight between them. They've already declared for Team Black and um, Team Green. And so you have these two sides, these two representatives. They haven't had any part in the conflict thus far, but they have their loyalties. And then as we come to find out later on in the episode that these two houses have had problems with each other going back for ages. How, why, and for what reason, no one can say because it's so far back in the past. But it's like, just given the opportunity, given any excuse, they would welcome a chance just to go to war, right? And basically, it's like a powder keg and the two houses are just looking for a spark. They've had problems with each other for generations and they're just itching for a fight. Any opportunity, the least offense or whatever, just give them a reason and they're more than ready to go to war with each other. And that's kind of like what for a lot of the houses is going to break down to where they might have their petty squabbles, disagreements about if it's property or, you know, money um, resources and whatnot, where they already have their problems and their bad blood between each other. And with this brewing war, them taking sides on one side or the other just gives them another reason to, to engage with each other, to, to fight with each other. I remember some time back, I saw an interview with, I don't remember who the rapper was, but I think it might've been like 50 Cent or something like that. And whoever the person was, they were talking about entourages and rappers. The rapper, who's the star, they might have like a hot song, a hot album or whatever it is. They're successful at the time. And thus that allows them to have these other people around them. Now, given their position, the rapper isn't necessarily out here looking for trouble or looking to start problems. They've got a lot going for themselves. They're looking to make money. They're looking to be, to continue to be successful you know, they're not really going to be the problem starters for the most part. What you get into is when you're the rapper and then you now have 20, 25 people around you where some of them are trying to get into your good graces. Some of them are trying to make a name for themselves. Some of them, they're not necessarily making money. They're just there to be there and to hang around. Whenever the opportunity arises for them to make a bit of noise and get some attention for themselves or to take advantage of a situation to make some money for themselves, they'll take it. And imagine it's now like two crews meeting up, right? Make it even worse if, you know, there's some bad blood between these two rappers, right? So your crew meets this other crew, the two rappers or let's say, you know, label heads or whatever it is, head honchos or whoever it is, the center of these entourages, they meet up, they might not necessarily get into a fight themselves. What you more likely would have is that, you know, some guy from your B squad is looking to prove himself to you to get into your good graces. And so when the two crews meet, he might then say something to someone from the other crew. Or they have an exchange of words and where it's something that could be easily squashed, it ends up escalating because, 
you know, this person has their motives, that person has their motives. It's like, they're not really, they're a part of your crew, but they're operating under their own needs, wants, and desires, right? They have their own motivations. They might do things that get you and your crew into problems. And that's kind of what you have going on here. You have petty squabbles between these different groups that have allied themselves with be a team black or team green and in trying to curry favor with whatever team they're with or simply because they have pre-existing bad blood, they might then, you know, decide to, to jump the gun and to start a fight, which is what we see at the start of the episode here. Neither one of these people, you know, has lost an eye. Their son was not, you know, devoured by a dragon. Their grandchild was not, you know, or a child was not killed in their beds. But yet they're out here very passionately in the mix. We see here, you know, these two groups meeting up. They feel compelled to defend the honor of Renera or to defend the honor of Aegon, to avenge Aegon. Very quickly, it becomes a conflict where the two sides ex both experience heavy losses. You sort of have this, um, this balance really on the two sides where on Team Black, you have Renera as the leader of that team or she's the, the ruler on that team. She gets emotional at times, but it's understandable. But for the most part, she's more level-headed, patient, has been open to trying other means to peacefully resolve these issues. But then you have her council around her, Damon and the other members of the council who very quickly were pushing for war. And we see during a sit-down meeting here with her and her council where She's still trying to give Damon time to appeal to Harrenhal to see if they'll come over to their side and see where things are from there as far as like how many soldiers and what resources do they have before they head off into battle. But you have it where her council members are pushing for her to just unleash the dragons. Never mind the Cisco reference. And, and really what she's seeing this as, and it's this, this thing that she's been repeating, is that she wants to be queen, yes, she believes she has a right to be queen, but it doesn't make sense to rush into this to destroy everything for the throne because there's no honor, glory, or achievement or what have you. It doesn't make sense to sit on a throne that's on a pile of rubble. She's having to maintain control over her council over the people around her, Damon chiefly, but now also the rest of the council to kind of keep them calm and keep them in check and keep them in control to keep them from overreaching. We've seen like the great tragedy of, of what Damon set into motion with this little kid. So it's like on the one side you have Rhaenyra and especially with the backing of Rhaenys, right? Like at the start of the episode, you have Rhaenys trying to speak reason to Rhaenyra to tell her to continue to be calm, to understand that wrong has been done on both sides. And there's still options here. There's still strategies that can be played out to resolve this peacefully. We know it's not going to happen, but it's nice to say, right? Which is that she suggests that Rhaenyra reaches out to Alicent to see if she can speak reason to her. She sends her youngest children off with one of Damon's daughters to safety right? To get them out of harm's way. But her council members at the end of their meeting suggest that she should also go someplace safe. Like last episode, you had this threat in her life where, you know, one of the twins infiltrated um, Dragonstone and got very close to her and very close to killing her. There's a high risk that they'll keep coming and she should get to safety, which Rhaenyra rejects. But then on the flip side of that, you have Aegon, where it's kind of the reverse, where Aegon is the hot-headed one that wants to rush into battle, that wants to unleash the dragons, that wants to, you know, anyone that doesn't bend the knee, you know, to just obliterate them. But on his side, you have it where, for the most part, his council members are trying to, to speak reason to him. He doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to try to resolve this peacefully. 
his thing is let's just fight it out. We're at war. Let's go ahead and and Aegon, like initially he, um, I think it was he was the one that proposed sending Aemon out with Sir Cole and this army that they're putting together to go into the Riverlands and take control of there because it's it's an important um strategic position, but. The other members of the council state that it's it's important for Vagar to remain at um, King's Landing to help to defend the city. And so as a result of that, he then suggests himself that he goes with, I think his dragon's name is Sunfire or whatever his dragon's name is, that they go and, you know, he'll help to provide like dragon cover or whatever it is. But he's like the king. They don't want to risk him. You know, it's important for him to stay in the safety of King's Landing. So it's like you have this juxtaposition of the two rulers and their councils where the two of them are like inverses of each other. But in addition to like the the juxtaposition of or the mirror reflection of the two teams, Team Green and Team Black, and the relationship between the rulers and the councils, I also thought it was interesting to see the, like the different houses and how they're either looking to be it remain neutral, try to stay out of the war or get involved for their own motivations. And I think I actually like that they're taking this slow and steady approach to moving towards war because while I enjoy the fighting and whatnot, and I think it'll be interesting, I really also enjoy the strategy and the politics of it. Never mind, you know, it's like fictional and whatnot. It's not like real life politics. I like the, like the political shenanigans and the diplomacy and all of this kind of stuff, you know? And something that, um, Reneas actually mentions after Rhaenyra leaves the council meeting where her council members were trying to push her towards unleashing the dragons and her going to safety is they were trying to state that they there's a need for to take advantage of team greens in action right like they weren't seeing any military movement on their side no boats no soldiers no you know cavalry or anything like that that they felt they should take advantage of the element of surprise and be the ones to strike the first blow to, to open up the war. But Reneus, um, suggests that they should continue to follow Rhaenyra's lead because looking back through Targaryen history, you have these great figures from the family where she, she explains that Rhaenyra would be the, what, like great, great, granddaughter of um what was his name Jahiris or Viserys whatever you know these names are all very similar the conciliator so like the diplomatic one who had the longest reign on the iron throne basically through diplomacy by trying to work things out through diplomatic means rather than through war and violence and she explains that he had an even longer reign than Aegon the Conqueror. You know, who was the one that united the seven kingdoms? Like, he had a long reign. Yes, through fighting, he, uni he united the, the seven kingdoms under the rule of the Iron Throne. And he's notable for that. He's like the first of his name, the ones that really put the Iron Throne on the map. But that his descendant, who used diplomacy that he had a longer reign and a more prosperous reign. Thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, go ahead and click the thumbs up button if you like what you saw, and go ahead and share it on social media.